I am Lucy Edwards, Director of Strategic Engagement at Metaport, and I am here with Carly Chances from uh, Van Sotheby's International Realty. And Carly, you are the commercial uh, realtor as well as uh, you are involved in blockchain, so that's your strategy and that's your specialty. Yes, that is. Thank you so much, Lucy, for having me. So let's talk about that. How did you land uh, in this world? Well, besides the commercial world, which is more traditional, but you are one step ahead of everybody else. <laughs> so I've always loved technology and it's always been part of my blood. And ever since I was in college, I was actually involved in the tech space. I built an app when I was in college. So for me, it was always in my, in my system. Like I couldn't go a day without thinking about the future and what would happen next. So naturally, as I got involved in the world of real estate, it was always just in me to say, okay, what's coming next? What's happening? Technology is not going away. It's something that we use on a regular basis for everything. So it's just a matter of how can I bring real estate to a whole other level? Like how can I make real estate something that lasts forever and to continue within every single generation evolving from the world from web two to web three? So how long you've been involved in commercial space and in the blockchain space? So currently I've been in the real estate space since about 2020. I kind of started, or no, 2019, I'm sorry, but it was like 2020 that I really just fully dived in on my own. So at the beginning of the pandemic, I kind of became a realtor like one during the craziest times mm -hmm. in the entire world. And then in the space of technology, I've been in tech since I was maybe like 19 years old, 20 years old. So it's just been something naturally for me that I've always been involved with. So you're embracing it and enjoying it. <laughs> exactly. I just have to bring everything I like and just put it all together. <laughs> and what about your company? Do they support your direction? Uh, are they offering any additional training, education? You are doing well by yourself. So, I mean, like every single company is really different, but at the end of the day, it's about the individual. So it's like, there's only so much that a company could provide, but this is a space that's very new. So if you don't take the initiative on your own, nobody else is gonna do it for you. So like my initiatives that I've always done has been taking what I already know, putting myself out there in very different places because blockchain and real estate doesn't really go together a few years ago, but now it's the thing that everybody's talking about. Mm -hmm. But I've known about this space because I was only in the technology industry and then I was only in the real estate industry. So now it's becoming common for both events or for events. Like, I mean, we go to conferences and there's things going on all the time in our community of real estate and blockchain and Web3. And you constantly hear these words, but it's what are agents actually doing? So I feel like myself, we're the innovators and like innovation yes. is the best word that we can really use to describe the space because how do you take something like buying and selling real estate but then how do you make it technical in another aspect well with ftx falling apart and there is so much noise and discussion in, in the media and uh, actually everywhere so how would you deal with your clients? How would you explain? How would you make people feel comfortable? So the FTX is a great example to use. And I think like, I don't think, I, I know this, is FTX in the same way how you have all these countries all around the world. All The best way to look at it is that FTX and crypto as a whole is like it's another country. So just because the peso may go down or the euro may go down or the durham there's all these different currencies that we use you don't see the dollar going out because of the other currencies mm -hmm. out in the world so it's the same thing with ftx and with crypto just because you see one company going bankrupt and it's giving a bad reputation to the space so it doesn't mean that all the other companies are going to go south either it's like any other bank. There's, there's Wells Fargo, there's Chase, there's Bank of America. And then maybe there's another bank that's out there and let's say the bank just loses all the money. You're not gonna see all the other banks go out of business because just one of them failed. And I think like that's the message that we're trying to really give into the community and into the audience that doesn't really know about the space too much. And that's the best way to create the comfort is to say you don't see 
everybody failing just because one fails. I like your uh, comparison. Mm -hmm. It's actually a great comparison because there's so many banks that are suffering, but others are doing so well. Mm -hmm. So you can't really put everyone in the same box. Yes, exactly. It's like the whole market as a whole. I mean, like look at the stock market, look at gold and silver, real estate. There's so many categories of everything where you're investing your money, whether it be tangible or digital assets and investments. It, it's all relative, but it's you don't need one to fail for everything else to fail. And that's the biggest problem. And that's that's where people are not really understanding it just because it is a new space to begin with. And we just have to bring that comfort and we have to continue to reiterate that it's not going away. Like you're OK, your money is safe and you just can't go in with your whole life savings into it because it is it is risky. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about NFT and um, the title work that is involved. And I understand that it's a special direction for title companies mm -hmm. and you're working with uh, title companies that qualify and understand your transactions. How does that work? How do you find those title companies? Do you have relationships? Mm -hmm. So relationships of, are, of course, at the forefront of everything, but also it's trust. So you have to make sure that there's it's a very crowded space. And when things are new, everybody thinks that they're going to be the next big thing. It's very similar to, I don't know if you remember, like during apps, like mm -hmm. there was a point where everybody wanted to create an app. And a few years ago, like I remember when I was in the app industry, there was one million apps going into the app store on a daily basis. It's the same exact thing right now with the NFT spaces that everybody feels like they're going to be the next a board ape yacht club or they're going to be like the next doodles and the reality is is that those are like one of a kind and not everybody is going to be able to be one of these very reputable and well-known nfts but you have to make sure that the utility is there so the place where it's actually making huge head waves right now in real estate is because right now with the transaction of properties, you are able to record your title in the form of an NFT. Mm -hmm. And this is really powerful across all types of businesses. It's even going to be like in the medical space where all of your medical records are in the form of an NFT. Like your identification is going to be all in the form of an NFT. So it's extremely powerful from that perspective because you get 100% ownership towards everything and everything is recorded on the blockchain. So it's almost impossible for there to be replicas, for there to be any fraud. So it's an extremely safe place to be able to have all of these things. So with real estate in this um, specific situation right now is that when you record your title in the form of an NFT, it's very easily to be able to be transferred and to be sold amongst buyers and sellers. So then like with the NFT space in just talking about the state of Florida, specifically Miami-Dade County, right now in Miami-Dade County, for every single real estate transaction of a property, your, your title is in a QR code. A mm -hmm. QR code is just as like, it, it's pretty much an mm -hmm. NFT when you think about it. And it's like our government and our city, our county is already doing it here. Miami is the first city that has actually implemented this very much thanks to our mayor, Francis Suarez, who is very pro tech and he has taken the initiative to create like a lot of awareness within our city here. But like NFTs are just going to be the future of how all the title is being recorded. And I predict in probably just the next five years, probably even less than that, when the county gets the right education system for their staff and for their employees to understand and to learn the space, it's game over for all the all the labor, all the work that has to go into it because it's going to be so safe. And once it's just going to be a gradual effect, especially as generations come, I mean, Gen Z is very pro into the blockchain space. So for them, it's very normal to be able to hold all of these things. So then just like in a matter of a few years, they're going to be owning all a ton of properties with NFT, like having their title on there. They're going to be just like utilizing the entire space of the blockchain. 
to be able to move it forward. And then eventually it's just going to be something so normal, like a credit card. Well, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I'm sure that the younger generation, are they, they are and they will embrace it so much faster and easier and with mm -hmm. better uh, pleasure than some <laughs> of my age. Uh, and, and that is something to look forward to. And, and they will take... Uh, they will they will take over and uh, of real estate like someone like you you are taking over the real estate industry so and you understand mm -hmm. other ways of how you can do business and yeah. you are explaining it to your clients and i'm sure they appreciate yeah that. it's just a matter of being prepared for what's coming next so it's not that there is a right way and a wrong way to do it i mean right now what the way that everyone is transacting it works it works but it's not going to be forever so it's what comes next? What is within the next 10 years, the 20 years, 30 years? And how are you working for that? I'm not working to service my clients today. Like I'm working to service my clients for tomorrow and for the next 10 years down the line. And I just want to be prepared and to be in the position where you don't fall behind. Let's talk about okay. NFT and uh, some agents afraid that it uh, that everything that they will be replaced and the mm -hmm. title companies and attorneys will be replaced can you explain the future and how it will affect today's real estate industry that you have attorney and title involved in every every transaction and uh, in some states you have to have two attorneys and mm -hmm. it's uh, it, it gets very complicated yeah so that's a great question and this is something that's always brought up is that people feel like jobs are being eliminated but the reality is is that there's actually more jobs being created around it because as time evolves it's the same thing like any other industry like look at newspapers for example and magazines everything used to be on paper and it's like people were like, oh, my God, we're eliminating the jobs of all the people who are delivering the mail or all the writers or the people who are doing this and that. And it, just because it's online, it's just a different skill set. And like that's the terminology that we have to be using, that you're not taking away the job of anybody. What you're doing is you're just changing the skills that are required to do a different type of job. So it's not that the job is going away. The job is just changing. And if anything, like look at influencers and look at like content creators. Those were jobs that didn't exist even when like I was in high school. Like I remember using like Instagram when I was already maybe like 17 years old was when it was like just starting to become cool. And now you see like it, it's cool from when you're like, I don't know, in second grade, third grade. It's, it's very different. And this has just been over the course of maybe like 10 years. It hasn't even been like it's been a really long time. So it's the opportunities are still there. And with the whole space of NFTs and title and legal and real estate agents, it's not going away. It's just different. And this is what I mentioned before, that you will fall behind if you don't keep up with what's happening next. So the more you know about what's coming, not only in the technology, but in the workspace, then you're just setting yourself up for success because you're going to know how to be able to monetize yeah. on these new opportunities and how to create more opportunities for everybody else who's entering the space for the first time. Well, especially in Miami, you have a lot of, and in Florida in general, you have a lot of uh, international buyers. And lately with everything else that's going on in South America, um, quite a few people are eager to sell their businesses, sell their properties, move to the United States or invest in the United States um, uh, market one way or the other. I understand that crypto is one of the ways that it's easier for everyone to, to get, get rid of their assets wherever they are and acquire something special here in, uh, in America. Mm -hmm. So with international buyers, that's, it's, it's where you benefit the most because it is so easy. Imagine like if you don't have the means of being able to use crypto and if you need to, if you need to move your funds immediately from one country to another, 
by the time you open up a bank account, you find some like somebody who you trust in there, you move the money, the money gets verified, and you go through like the whole due diligence process of going through a bank, it takes anywhere from 30 to 60 days. And if yeah. you have to exit and if you need to pivot immediately, you, you can't do that. It's impossible because the bank system, it's so nine to five, Monday to Friday, due diligence, like you have to deal with holidays and other emergencies that go on. And it just takes so long. The benefits of being able to live in like this tech world, especially with crypto, is that you can move it from one wallet to another instantly. And it happens, you, you don't need to do it within a specific working hour period. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through somebody else to do it. It's like, it just comes down to whoever is like the, the two parties at the end of the day, you cannot get more direct than that. And you don't have to worry about all the intermediaries to be able to, that, that will hinder your, your deal in any sense whatsoever. So it's having things instantly is where it makes it so powerful in the space. What about the transparency? So if let's say someone is um, selling something in mm -hmm. uh, Colombia, and then uh, they are purchasing uh, property here, the transparency with uh, with this but with that particular person coming in with crypto purchase. Mm -hmm. So everything is recorded on the blockchain, which is the best thing ever. I mean, you can see everything. Even if you undo something, you are able to track that because it's all recorded. So you can see any changes. Nobody will be able to forge any signatures because if you try to do that, like it's it's going to show. Like everything is right in front of you. Like there is, you, you won't be blindsided by anything whatsoever. So when you're having somebody else come in and wanting to be able to just like, do a transaction or being able to see everything. There's a lot of companies that can make sure that the funds are actually legit. So there's countless of them and you're able to convert the cash or convert the crypto into cash, convert the cash back into crypto or into whatever token you want, keep the crypto. I mean, it's just, it's so straightforward because it's, it's right in your face. You can see everything that's happening the whole time. And you mentioned when I met with you a few weeks ago, you mentioned about uh, the transaction that you were involved and how you were able to help your clients mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in Latin America, I believe it mm -hmm. was, and uh, how they were purchasing a commercial property and you were able to assist them immediately. And they mm -hmm. were just thrilled and happy. They wanted to get out. They wanted to get rid of uh, their commercial property wherever they were from. and. Uh, and I think you have a very happy ending there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I mean, it's happy for everybody at the end of the day. Like we're in the business because we want to help like our clients. And like for me, like my happiness is just seeing that my clients are making money, that my clients are happy, like with the selling of their property or with their acquisition of their new property or, or whatever means it is. It's just like, I'm happy if they're happy. And especially knowing it's, the government and politics is something that we have to follow really closely in this. So I remember when I was doing a deal, um, there was, I'm not going to mention which country it was, mm -hmm. but the country wasn't allowing people to move more than $100,000 at the time mm -hmm. to the specific person that I was representing. And I was doing a property where we needed to hold almost a million dollars for the deposit and a million dollars and if they can only move a hundred thousand dollars at a time because that is what the bank in the country allowed them mm -hmm. to do they did not understand the space of crypto and it, they were just they had no idea what it was they were unwary about it but this is a situation where crypto and the trust as like not only a real estate advisor but as like an advisor of the entire space of web3 I'm able to help them with their accounts, with their setup, to be able to put all the funds in there and be able to put the deposits over here and then reconvert it into cash. If the seller doesn't feel comfortable with accepting crypto, there's always a way to be able to convert it into your native currency. So like in situations like that, it's super beneficial because if not, we would have lost the property if we couldn't send all the funds together at once. And because of crypto, we were able to do that. And they would probably 
lose all the funds wherever they're from anyway, eventually. Yeah, exactly. Because so. it's a way of getting control. And that's like crypto, it, it's a it's a free country at the end of the day. There's no, nobody's telling you how much you can do, how much you can move. It's you're you're just independent. And that's the best thing about the industry is that nobody is micromanaging you or monitoring how much you can spend at once. And I have experienced this like on a personal basis. Like I just recently bought a property for myself and I had to go to the bank to be able to issue the wire. Like I couldn't just do that from the comfort of my home. And or if I would have been traveling, I wouldn't have been able to buy the property. So it's it's just making things a lot easier. And I feel like with time, eventually enough people are going to experience it where it's going to be the only way that you're going to want to do things. And they will trust the transactions. They do need to trust the advisor. Exactly. You, know, you have to feel comfortable. If you mm -hmm. don't understand anything, you don't understand much about yes. what crypto is all about, uh -huh. you have to trust the advisor. Like you do with any transaction. If I'm purchasing a condo and I'm not sure whether it's a good deal or not, mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out to you anyway and ask, do you think it's really worth that much money? Because yes. it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we hire people for everything. Mm -hmm. We go to a doctor to ask them for their opinion. You have a rash on your body. It's like, <laughs> what is this? It's like, is it cancer or is it a, an allergic reaction? You just, you never know. And it's like every single industry is the same. You have to have your advisors. You have to have your consultants, your professionals in this space who will give you their best professional opinion as to what to do to move forward. I totally agree mm -hmm. with you. What would you wish to an agent, experienced or new agent, who is considering being part of uh, crypto and blockchain? So what? Uh, but they are afraid or not comfortable, or they're not sure whether it's going to that industry is going to survive or not. What would you wish to them? What What do you have to say? To constantly learn. It's not going away, and everybody knows what it is. Uh, it's like the best reference is an iPhone. Almost every single person in the world knows what an iPhone is from the age of three years old <laughs> to somebody who's over 100 years old. They, you know what it is. And it's the same thing with crypto. Right now, it's a brand. And once something becomes a brand, it is never going away. And for anybody who's interested in getting involved in the space, that's a matter of just finding your community finding a group of people who you really trust and growing together with them. Because this is a crowded space, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of people who don't know what they're doing, and it's very easy to get manipulated and to get sucked in into something that's not right. At the end of the day, this is technology and it's very risky, and you can make some very bad investments. I have lost money in this space at the beginning too, because I, I was I was a beginner at some point and I didn't know like I, I've lost a lot of money because I was like partnering with the wrong people or I was investing in the wrong projects. But you have to be able to have skin in the game to be able and you have to just follow the process like you have to be invested across personally across everything that's out there because that's the only way that you're going to be able to advise your customers and your clients to being able to know what's right and what's wrong unless you actually do it yourself. So like as like me personally, I like to make sure that whatever I'm advising in, that I'm invested in that. So people ask me questions about crypto and then the first thing they ask me is if I own it. Yes, of course I own it. They ask me questions about NFTs. They're like, do you own NFTs? Yes, I do. If I were to say no to those questions, why would you trust me in return? Why would you think that I know what I'm doing if I'm not personally invested in this space? So that's what I would recommend to anybody who's interested in getting it is you have to figure it out on your own. There's so many videos online. I'm constantly posting myself videos across all my social media outlets about things that I've learned, things to do. I'm just, I love to educate my audience because I've been screwed before. I see people get screwed. I don't want that to happen to anybody. So there's a lot out there and it's just a matter of trusting your sources and constantly learning about it. 
Well, thank you. Thank you, Carly, so much. And uh, I'm going to post, like right now, you can see uh, mm -hmm. on the bottom of the screen uh, the information. Can uh, anyone, everyone mm -hmm. reach out to you and ask you some questions <laughs> and advice? Sounds great. Thank you so much, Lucy. So please reach out to Carly. She's the best source <laughs> ever. Yes, she's in Miami, but listen, uh, you have your yes. iPhone, so you can pick it up and dial it. Yes. Uh, and here is the number on the bottom of the screen. Thank you so much. And thank you, Carly, thank very much. You. Thank have a great day. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.